Hey, Boaz here from Next Pittsburgh. I'm here at the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum, and today we're going behind the scenes with the executive director and CEO, Scott Becker. Thanks for having us, Scott. Great to have you here, Boaz. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's get on the All trolley. Oh, Lord. Yeah. And so how old is this trolley here? 1932. And so when this trolley was in operation, where was it going? It ran on the Philadelphia and Westchester Traction Company, which is in the eastern part of the state. And where are you taking us on this trolley? We're going to take you down to our uh, West Campus where we have our maintenance and restoration shop. Have you always been interested in trolleys? Yeah, um, I started as a volunteer at the Shoreline Trolley Museum when I was 15 years old. Wow, so as a teenager already this appealed to you. Yeah, so uh, I've been at this for over 50 years. And Bruce is the same way. He started when he was a teenager here. And So Bruce, how long have you been operating a trolley? I started uh, in 1966 here at the museum learning how to run a trolley when I was 15. <laughs> so when you were a kid, would you be riding trolleys around Pittsburgh? I learned about the Sunday Pass, where you could ride all day for one fare, a dollar and a quarter. So we went to Westview Park a lot because that was like a treat. Uh, we all... The roller coaster was still there? Oh, sure. The park was there until the 70s. We could go there, ride ride some rides, and get back on the trolley and ride some more on the trolley. Oh, my gosh. Wow, this is wild. Everybody in here is a volunteer. And uh, this is our maintenance pit right here. We can see where we actually do uh, running repairs, inspections, what have you. So this car actually ran on the same line as the car we were riding on, but it's a lot newer, 1949. So Bruce, tell me your title here. Uh, manager of Restoration. Looking around, it seems like there's you've got a lot of work to do over here. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are two streetcars here on, in, in the Restoration Bay. And so when you get like a trolley like this in here, a train car in here, like how long does it take to restore it? Well, it depends on what we do. Uh, it, it, takes, uh, it takes about eight years to get something turned out using volunteer labor. Where did this trolley used to run? This trolley is a trolley that ran on the streets of Philadelphia. And they came up with this series that they built during the 1920s. And so how many of these cars are around today? Well, let's see. There's two. <laughs> three. Oh, I'm sorry. There are three. Yeah. There's, uh, there's one here, one in Scranton, and... Uh, there's uh, one that has a private owner. It's wild. I mean, you're doing this incredible thing and saving these parts of history that it seems like could so easily end up in like a trash heap. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah we have pictures of that trash heap. Yeah. <laughs> so the big job inside here was to put a brand new headliner, a brand new ceiling. Uh -huh. This car was uh, known as a paint liner in Philadelphia because... It was an old car that they painted up and they changed the light fixtures to make it more like the streamlined modern cars. Wow. And I can only imagine that when you're taking stuff apart, you're like, oh, well, we need this kind of screw. It's like, well, this screw hasn't been made for 70 years, this kind of screw. Well, uh, we, we have sources where we can get a lot of the specialty screws that we need to do things with. But you're right. That is a problem. When they come to us, they have battle damage. Well, when this car came uh, came on Groundhog Day of uh, 2005, and it was at t like four degrees outside, and it was at 25 broken windows and it had graffiti all over it. So Bruce and his daughters and others jumped in, and they repainted it, and they replaced all the broken windows. And by May 5th, when we opened the building to the public, it was all nicely uh, done. Yeah, yeah. And see, they're all interlocked with uh, rods and um, hardware. And, you know, this was designed before computers, so they were pretty clever back then. Yeah. Well, tell me what we're standing in front of right now, Bruce. Well, this is car 1713. Okay. And in uh, 1980, the Steelers were up for Super Bowl XIV. Uh -huh. A young girl, nine years old, sent Mayor Caligiri a letter and said, the Steelers ought to have a trolley painted in commemoration of their achievements. Sure. You know, because you've got all these trolleys painted all these different ways anymore. So the mayor <laughs> took the letter and he put a note on it and forwarded it to the Port Authority. And so when this car came out, as Bruce was saying, it was January 18th, 1980. It was the Friday before Super Bowl XIV. They had this huge pep rally at the city county building. They had 6,000 people there wow. when this car rolled down the street and people went bananas. 
And so what does it take to get this into running, you know, service again? Well, it's a matter of getting the getting all the steel fixed underneath and then putting the wooden floor in and then putting the interior back together. And it really feels like you need an artist to look at those old photos and look at this and make it look exactly the same way. Like that seems sort of like a challenge. Yeah, well, we have we have artistic people around here, yeah. so I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. And Michael, you are working on, on this restoration, right? What part are you playing? Yeah, that's correct. Um, well, I'm currently a project manager of this restoration. How do you know what to do? Like, I'm just looking here, and there's like a billion different parts. Like, where do you start? That's honestly, when we first got the car, I was asking myself the same thing. Uh, and quite frankly, it, it, it's one bite at a time. So, I mean, we've, we've done quite a bit, and there's still obviously a lot to do. But um, I'd, I'd like to think we're over the halfway hump. You yeah. know, even just looking at it, it's... From from May when we acquired the car, late May, it, it's night and day. Yeah, I really like this part of the line because it goes through the woods. It meanders alongside a creek. And there were literally hundreds of miles of trolley lines all through Pennsylvania that looked just like this. And you say just in Pittsburgh alone, there were over 600 miles of trolley tracks. Yes, and when they first started out, they started building the electric trolley lines back in the 1890s. A lot of places, there weren't any houses yet. So they built the trolley line, and then the developers came out and built the houses along the line. And they used to have brochures that said, you know, come to our development along the car line. Kennywood is like intrinsically tried, right. tied to the trolley. Oh, absolutely. So it's a trolley park. So Pennsylvania had more trolley companies than any other state. And not surprisingly, it had the most amusement parks of any other state. The other thing that's kind of neat, you know, we're here on a bright, sunny day. We actually have solar panels on the roof. We'll show them to you when we get down to the other site. We actually are operating this trolley off the sun right now. Wow. And cold, sunny days are great for solar. And before we leave, we got to check out this new facility. This is your new Welcome and Education Center. Absolutely. It's a beautiful building, and I think you'll enjoy seeing it. So you've got tons of cool interactive exhibits here. We do. We do. Uh, one of the most interesting is this trolley operator simulator. So we can actually pretend we're running a trolley. This is the throttle over here, the trolley controller, and you pull it towards you, and then it starts going down the track, see? This is what it's like to be Bruce. Yeah, and see how many watts I'm using? Now, you have to always have to be careful because, uh-oh, there's a cow on the track. So I put the brakes on. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Oh. Is the cow going to live? Uh-oh, the cow looks angry. Yeah, well, he's okay. That's Daisy, by the way. See, great job. You saved Daisy. We talked about 600 miles of track. Well, there's the big map. So that map was downtown at the Equitable Gas Building where Pittsburgh Railways had their headquarters. And they actually had a dispatcher's area. And they would refer to that map if they had like a a breakdown or something and they had to do a detour, they would use that map to figure out, okay, well, how are we going to keep these trolleys moving? It's so cool to have that piece of Pittsburgh history. And thanks for doing your part for, for keeping all these trolleys yeah. moving. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Thanks for the tour, Scott. We're so happy to have you out today and hope you come back and visit us, visit us again. Yeah.